Yeah. Yep. Dark, oh, which is, is the highest record now. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> now, I always feel that if I come to a meetup, I might as well give a talk so that, you know, make use of my time. Anyway, um, so I was preparing a class uh, for Python beginners, and I wanted to use something interesting that they may find motivating. I thought there's this project that came out uh, a couple years back from Microsoft called Project Malmo. Uh, Project Malmo is actually a Mi Minecraft plugin. Uh, but it's interesting because it's a Minecraft plugin that comes with Minecraft. So if you install, it's, it's an open source project, so if you install Project Malmo from its GitHub page, you also get a copy of Minecraft. No license required, but you can't um, play online. But you can play locally. In uh, any case, the idea of Malmo is so that you can um, create an uh, intelligent agent to play the game for you. But not play the game, the game. In, in Malmo, you can design missions. So there's this XML format that they have created, where in the XML format, you describe the mission, and you can write the you know, the, the brain of the agent to solve the mission. So here I think there's this GIF, which is a, a mission to collect, to, to walk to the Lapis Lazu block. The diamond is just to show you where the block you're supposed to go. So this is sort of a navigation mission. You start off at a certain point, you need to navigate the, the agent into, to the target destination. Okay, the problem being that um, this is a class for Python beginners, but the, the tutorial they have, so this is from the Malmo repository, and this is the, their Python tutorial. So if you run, they have a PDF tutorial, and the tutorial is in Python. So if you go through the tutorial, you have to run this tutorial one, which is a little bit hard for Python beginners, I think. Part of it is because they had to support both Python 2 and 3. Uh, you can see from the beginning. The first part is to do with the print uh, statement. But also part of it is to do with sort of handling errors. So a lot of it is to do with um, how it works. It's kind of as a server client architecture. So when you start the plugin, the plugin acts as a server. And then this Python program is the client. It will connect and talk to the server. Um, and then there's this C++ library at the back end that does the communications. So this is a, the, the Python uh, wrapper around the C++ library. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of this error handling and then like restart, you know, if you connect, cannot, cannot, to, cannot connect to the server. And then you need to wait because when you connect to the server, it's got to build the level. You can instantiate all the blocks. That takes a bit of time. So you've got to wait until the, the world is ready. And then when the world is finally ready, you gotta, then you can run your mission, which is the, the last part uh, while the mission is running and so on. You get the world state, that is the observation, that is how the agent observes the world, and then you, do, you perform your actions, right? The classic um, sense, plan, and act loop of agents. Uh, as you can see, this is like already, okay, but minus the big license at the beginning, is quite a lot of code for a beginner. Um, so the goal of the, the, the library really is to make it much easier. So let me show you the end result anyway. Uh, so the, oh, this is the one. Ah, the goal is to do something like this, which is a little bit better, I hope. Um, so we just load the mission, say which uh, mission XML. And um, I think this is the really neat part. So instead of this um, while loop and all that to get the observations, we just use the standard Python iteration. So we iterate over the um, sequence of iterations, uh, the sequence of observations. And then uh, we inspect the observations. In this case, we're checking the floor. Um, is it... Uh, yeah, is it air or is it not air? I mean, this is the, this is, this is the left-hand rule. So you can do simple actions like move, dot move, and dot turn left. I think in, in original Malmo, it's not a tutorial. You had to do like the API is something called send command. So you say send command and you give it a string. So send command string move one means move forward. And then I think something like turn minus one means turn left. And turn one means turn right. Which is again a little hard for people to remember and type the string correctly and so on. So in in the library, I just made it into like a, like a single function. So like just turn left and turn right, literally, instead of saying turn minus one, which was the original C++ API. Yep, uh, and then what else? Yep, that's pretty much it actually. So currently at this point, this is built mainly to support the course I was doing. So it doesn't have all the support for the full C++ API because actually this also supports things like um, the continuous mode. So if you ever played Minecraft, you actually know that when you move, like you press W, it doesn't move in chunks of one meter. It actually moves in sort of like a car, right? But if you notice in this screenshot, actually it, it moves sort of in a discrete chunk. Because I felt that for the course for Python beginners, it's easier to, to have them move and you move just like one unit instead of having to remember like move and then stop moving after five seconds. Because you know, like a car, you would do that, right? You press the accelerator and then you stop pressing, which is a little bit harder for people at the beginning. So it doesn't support the continuous mode at this point. So right now, it has just the basic abstractions for the ones I was using for the class. Yep. So there's always more to do to make it um, fully compliant with the C++ API. Okay, I think that's almost time, so which is good. Mm -hmm. Extra 10 seconds for questions. Yes. Um, question, what does is, what is turn zero do? So you said turn one. I have never tried that. But that's a good point, right? So what is, what is zero? 
I think I, I guess it just doesn't do anything if it doesn't matches any of the um, you know minus one or one. And I think the the non there's, there's also continuous turns where it changes the, the angle continuously. So turn one is 90, 90 degrees to the yeah ninety degrees to the left and one turn one is ninety degrees to the right minus one is ninety degrees to the left. Yeah. Turn zero is just like nothing. I guess you can think of it as not turning right because it's not really turning. Yeah. There's also move minus one which moves backwards, but uh, we really had to do move backwards in. In the missions, yeah. Uh, how have students found this like easy or hard or? Uh, uh, I think it's okay because we. I think I, I personally think the using the library helped a lot <laughs> because it's a lot shorter. I mean, like the there's not a lot of busy work to do with error handling. I mean, it's all it's still the same code actually. So I just I just took what I did basically is I just took the this code and just write Python methods around each of the things. And it's all hidden behind the, the, the Python library, right? So um, they've actually felt it was quite okay. But I guess trying to teach the left-hand rule in like a one-hour workshop was too much. So I guess they didn't really get, get to the left-hand rule part. Yeah. But they could figure out like how to turn and move and stuff like that, yeah. Yes? Was the, was the class like just uh, like was the, the point of the was the exit, was like was the goal the objective of the class to teach them Python or to help them control Minecraft or can you say a bit more? Um, the class was supposed to be after they did like a Python 101 so they know like Python like list dictionaries and stuff so this class was more like an applications class like what can we use Python for so in this particular class I was trying to explain like can you use Python to control robots but I didn't want to deal with like hardware so Project Malmo is sort of like a robot simulator, right? So we simulate this robot in this environment. And the environment's quite rich, as you can see. You can have things like you know, lava pits and um, lapis lazuli and all this kind of thing. So, um, so it's just that. So in this, I think we we're, were doing different examples. Like maybe you can imagine, like if you could program like a vacuum cleaning robot, that was one of the examples we had. Like how would you make it move around so that it covers all the tiles, right? But of course, here it's simplified. So when you move, you literally always move one meter forward, and when you turn, you always turn 90 degrees. In the real world, it's much more complicated. But even then, we're just um, we're focusing on the logical part of it. How would you design the, the, the policy of the agent in the logical way? Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. So I think go, do check out Project Mammal. It's a it's an open source project, MIT licensed. I think also same as my project is also MIT licensed. Yeah. So give it a try. Oh, actually, by the way, it's, it's actually meant to be used for. I didn't say. I'm just saying a little bit about Project Mammal. It's meant to be used for. Its original design was meant to be used for human um, robot collaboration. So the idea is that you will have someone who plays it as the human, and then you have another program which, which, is the, which is the robot, and the robot will help the human achieve whatever he was trying to achieve in the, in the mission. That was sort of the grand goal of um, Project Mama, like this human AI collaborative um, environment. Yeah. Do you think it succeeded? Uh, well, yes, because they ran a project, which was the, they ran a project actually, which is to help the human agent corral a pig. So in Minecraft, you have this pig. So they had this environment where there was a pig and there was two agents. One was human, one was AI. So the AI had to help the human trap the pig. So the AI had to observe how the human being was moving in the environment, right? And then you had to trap the pig in some kind of like a corner. So you can read more about it on the, the Project Malmo website. I think the, there was an NTU student who, 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 who uh, won the first place and he published a paper on it. It's called Hawk Rider. H-O-G-R-I-D, that's, that's his agent. You can read out more about that um, in his paper. Yep. All right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.